Nothing's disappeared. You know, in the juicer thing, something's being shoved away. Um, we are actually, in the long term, want those things. You know, all those fibers and, and other materials that are in there, the antioxidants and pigments, and we can get that from blending. Okay, so, you, so a beginner, you recommend definitely, definitely starting with a juicer. Oh, I think be beginners really need to turn juicers, on the juicer. Do you have any recommendations on juicers, or do you think, you know, as long as you're juicing to start with? I, I always feel that the best juicer is the one that you don't use that's in your cupboard. <laughs> so get that one out and break it. You know, use it until it breaks, then get a good one. And when I say good one, there's different good ones. I mean, Norwalk yeah. juicers are great, but they're, uh, you know, a pain to, like, use because it's a press and... You need to grind it first and put it in the bag and then press it all out. It's a whole ordeal. Yeah. But if you really want to do that or if you're dealing with a very serious condition and you're committed, yeah. Norwalk Juicer is the best. Green Star is really kind of where you want to be. It's a, it's a trituration juicer and it slowly presses that carrot or that celery between those gears and, and gives you a low level of oxidation as compared to the centrifugal like Jack LaLanne type juicer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I personally do like the Jack LaLanne juicer for like parties. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like that, which is yeah. you just serve a whole bunch of people yeah, up yeah, stuff. It's yeah, really good. Yeah. Um, so the video I did the other day, I talked about protein. I actually had Sun Warrior protein, um, and one person asked if we can't order the products that you mentioned, if we can't afford it, what are some other sources of protein that they can have in, in, in the raw food diet? Okay, um, I'm just trying to think the best value for your money. It's probably chia seed. Yeah. That would be the best value for your money in terms of protein. Okay. Chia is a complete protein. It also contains ALA, omega-3 fatty acids, and, and it can be very rich in minerals. It's, it's one of the greatest foods out there. Yeah. It's really a superfood. Yeah. And, and when I say chia, people are like, is that the same as like a chia pet? And it's, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Like, you know, chia pet yeah. is that little plant that's growing. That's, that's that. chia seed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Michelle asks, how do you get started and how do you decide how far you want to go or should go as far as being, you know, do you start off going 50%, 80%, 100% raw? What do you recommend for, for different people? Um, I'd really recommend that you become 80% raw but in a reasonable amount of time. Okay. That's kind of the immediate goal. Okay. That's actually fairly easy to do. Yeah. It's, it's almost impossible not to do it when you get turned yeah. on to this stuff because, yeah. you know, it just crowds out everything else. I agree. Yeah. I mean, we say, um, I saw from Canada do about 80%. And it's a lot easier than going to the full 100%, but so it's very reasonable for people to, to get out. Oh, it's reasonable. It's, it's yeah. reasonable. It's doable. Doable, yeah. Um, and it's amazing because it, it, it oh, just yeah. gets you out of a whole, yeah. you know, it's a pit, it's almost like a pit of despair. Yeah. You know, like, like I, I don't get it myself. I mean, I don't know how people have any hope, really. Yeah. It's like when you get out of that low feeling of, like, having yeah. low energy and just whatever that yeah. is, um, and you start getting that real life force energy coming in, yeah. and it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like... I like to think that like a lot of what's out there is really, it's actually drawing away life force energy. It's not even giving anybody any energy, yeah. like yeah. pizza for example. Yeah. But as you come off that stuff and you get into stuff that's giving you energy and life force power, yeah. you come into a state of like hope and happiness and like yeah. things are getting better and it's amazing. Yeah, I, I actually, one of the, the uh, things, I, the way I describe it is for anybody who's ever been drunk and had a, hungover, a hangover the next day, mm -hmm. you know, the difference between that hangover in the morning and then all of a sudden in, in the evening when all of a sudden you're like, oh, I'm starting to feel better, I'm getting out of that fog. I talk about that as the difference between when you're on the regular American sad diet and getting onto an 80% raw diet. It's like all of a sudden, that, that just, is absolutely just brilliant. Like awakening. And it's not, you know, it's just that, right. that subtle shift there of the fog lifting and all of a sudden you just got clarity that you just didn't know you had before. That, that is ver a very yeah. good analogy. I mean, that, that is really hits it on the, on, right on the head. I'm sure, I'm sure lots of people have had hangover, so I'm sure they can relate to that. A few. A few. Um, I only have access to supermarket produce, the majority of which is conventional. Do you recommend eating this raw? Also, what do you eat for lunch and dinner on a typical day? This is from Claudio. Um, I would very strongly recommend that you ask your grocer Okay. Right? Whoever's working in the produce department to get organic food into that yeah. store. It's available to them. And we invoke the magic three letter word, ASK. Yeah. You cannot believe what you can get by asking. I was reading a success book in the, let's see, this was in the fall. And it was just dynamite. It was actually when I went to Europe. And one of the, one of the guys in there, he, it was his story about how he became a billionaire. He was illiterate. He became a billionaire, he was illiterate. Really? And it all came out. And people were like, how in the world did you get here? Yeah. You're illiterate. I mean, how, like, 
Imagine having to go to banks and signing documents the yeah, whole nine yards. Yeah. And he, it, this is what he said. I ask people for help yeah. and they help me. Yeah. Ask for help. Ask your grocer to get organic food in there and it will be there. Um, you know, should you eat conventional produce? It's hard for me to even conceive of that now with my perspective. Yeah. Um, it's just, you know, that I just look at it and go, whoa, I can't, I'd rather eat nothing myself. That's just because I'm far along. Would that be better than having, you know, pizza and pasta and all the regular stuff? Well, yeah, because, you know, what the pizza and pasta really is, is all those conventional vegetables just yeah. concentrated, concentrated down. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, of course. Yeah. It's, it's great. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, Helen asks, she, she said she drinks a big glass of juice in the morning and one for lunch and also drinks a lot of water. My question is, how much juice can I drink? Is there a limit during the day? Yes, um, there is a limit to what you can handle, and, and it's different per person. Now, for me, if I have too much juice, what ends up happening is, is my body starts reacting weird because it expects the fiber. Yeah. And so I can get a reaction to that. Now, I've known people who are very different from me. Yeah. I've known people who are worse than me, cannot drink really hardly any juice long term, like every day, yeah. because they start getting pains in their intestines because there's, their body's in so much in demand of fiber. Yeah. Then I've seen people who do 64 ounces of vegetable juice a day and have done that for years. Wow. And that's how much we vary in terms of our ability to handle fiber or, or not handle fiber. Yeah. Again, that's a trial and success. Trial and success. Trial and success. I mean, the, what I recommend is, you know, start drinking juices just to quench your thirst, which is a great way to do it. Yeah. In the long term, drink your vegetable juice with a meal. So the fiber is there and you don't get that weird like you know sensation of like something should be there but it's not yeah. um, because it was absorbed already you know that's kind of what happens when I drink too many juices yeah. my body goes what is happening here yeah. uh, Sharon asks what's the difference between coconut butter and coconut oil okay good question uh, it, inevitably we we had to come to a difference between those two yeah. they were both marketed as the same product originally and, and that coconut oil we call it coconut oil yeah. now before it's coconut oil slash butter is an extracted fat. It's a pressed fat out of the coconut, the hard, mature coconut. So, you know, if you ever opened up a hard coconut and you have that thick white stuff that's real hard, yep. if you press that out, you'll get coconut oil. Okay. okay, now if you take that and you grind it, you, you grind it in, like you stone grind it, or you, you grind it in what they call a conch in the chocolate industry, yep. With the fiber and everything, you just grind that down, you'll get what's called a coconut cream, like a cream cheese, and that today is being called coconut butter. Okay. So that's more like a cream cheese flavor, taste, and consistency, and is a pretty darn good tasting product. It's pretty powerful. I was just, we were talking to Frank before, I mean, I, I eat that stuff out of it. It's, it's, and it's really it's good, good food for kids, like yeah. outrageous, because yeah, there's growth so factors good. in it. So good. It's outrageous. To, just to arrive at that kind of a food product um, from a point of zero technology to where yeah. we are now, yeah. the amount of nutrients you can really liberate out of that coconut is, is really powerful. And what it does, it inspires like actual growth, like yeah. hormones and yeah. all of those things in not only kids, but adults as well. Yeah. And so you think with, in terms of coconut oil and coconut butter, any, you know, what age should... Can kids have that at any age? If they agree with it, yeah. With Coconut it. is one of the first foods that you yeah. really should have in your lifestyle. Yeah. Because most of us don't live in the tropics, we don't grow up with the spoon meat coconut, the very young jelly meat, which is easier to digest than even avocado is for a baby. That's amazing. And so, you know, in the tropics, that's kind of what's natural and it's kind of what happens. It's just automatic. And, and therefore, we miss a big component of what our diet could consist of. Um, but we can get at it, you know, in another way, which is these coconut butters and coconut oil. Okay, interesting. Um, only a couple questions left. Let's see. Uh, Lorian said, 